Hey guys, last lesson we left off talking about the solutions of the Schrodinger equation. You know how we know that the Schrodinger equation gives us two linearly independent solutions, but really it's more about using this perceptive eye of identifying when the energy and the potential, okay, when we compare them together, changes sign for all the regions of x. So today we're gonna go uh, forward in that in that line of thought, right, and see how once obtaining the solutions, okay, for basically um, all energy levels and for you know all ranges of, of the x domain, what conditions we can then apply to really get the final solution. So the solutions of the Schrodinger equation, okay, we talked about comparing the energy with the potential. Okay, I say again, our main objective is to find a wave function, okay, that represents the state of the system. And because it's characterized by the energy of the system, we need to compare the potential and the energy. So today, let's, let's look at an example. So I have sketched the potential over here, right? And remember, we need to consider energy levels which are changes signs for all domain of x. So by looking at the potential, okay, which is v0, v0 is the potential over here, we must isolate the cases where the energy is less than v0 and when the energy is more than v0. Okay, I hope you can see that. Now, um, if I were to graph it out here, so let's just say we got E1, okay, and E2, okay, under the assumption that the energy levels are more than zero, okay, so we just consider energy levels more than zero. We see that as the energy increases, okay, and then when it's about down here, it's about to reach V0, and if it increases one more, we can see that this area, X0 to, to X0 to X1, oh sorry, this area from minus infinity to, to X0 and X0 to plus infinity, this V minus E changes sign, okay, I hope we can see that. At this point, the potential is more than the energy, so maybe this will be a positive, it's a positive, but as we go over here, this becomes a negative. So once it changes sign, we need to uh, separate the cases, okay? That is always how the process goes. But once we do that, we again need to write the solutions as a set of solutions, okay, in terms of psi, which we label as psi 1, psi 2, psi 3. When we do this when the potential changes uh, its value given whatever domain of x. So, as you can see, from minus infinity to x0, the potential is uh, v0, right? But from x0 to x1, the potential drops to zero. So the potential changes. So we need to, you know, again, write an, another, okay, one of the components of the solution, okay? And then later, when we go to x1 to infinity, the potential changes again back to v0. So we need to write another component. So we got uh, psi1, psi2, psi3. But all these will be the set of solutions for psi. But this psi will be when the energy is less than the uh, potential, okay? I hope you can see that. So as Logically speaking, when the energy is more than the potential, it becomes another set of solutions. So this would become another set of solutions, all right? Psi 1, Psi 2, Psi 3. So really, it's a two-set process. We first identify when the, when the potential against the energy changes sign for the whole domain of X, and then we again must identify, okay, when the potential changes uh, for each region of X. Now, I would just, uh, let's just test our knowledge. So we want to fill out the domains for x, okay? So now, we are dealing with the energy less than the potential, all right? And we want to fill in the domains of x for these separate solutions, okay? When the potential changes. So what's the first one? Now, psi 1 is actually the solution over here. This would be um, x0, right? Uh, psi 2 is from here to here. So this would be x0 to x1, okay? And uh, psi 3 is from x1 to infinity. So this would be x1 to infinity. All right, and I want to talk about, okay, the same applies for the, the case where the energy is more than the potential, but we want to look at this for now, and we want to talk about these things called the bound states and the, yeah, the bound states and the unbound states. We always go back to that, okay? That's why that, that lesson was quite important. Now, remember, what's a bound state? A bound state is that the energy, the particle is confined at a finite region for all energy levels, right? Now, coming from that, we can also say something called a bound solution. A bound solution, it, it says that, you know, um, the energy is confined within a finite region for that solution only, okay? So, borrowing that concept, what we can see is that for phi, uh, psi 1, okay, psi 1 is the, the uh, wave function in the region over here, this would be what is known as a bound solution, okay? Bound solution, not a bound state yet, okay? Because a bound state is for all energy levels. Uh, psi 2, okay, is also a bound solution because it moves in a finite region. Bound solution, and phi 3 is also a bound solution, okay? Now, I hope you can see that because, 
really the energy is less than the potential so the motion of the particle is gonna be decaying all right so if this is this this is a bound solution this is a bound solution this is a bound solution obviously this phi for the energy less than the potential is also a bound solution all right and we also said that we can carry out the qualitative analysis and draw something like that okay which is uh, oscillating here and it's decaying over here like so now what about um the, the case where the energy is more than the potential so the it'll be like this all right and as we can see that this is gonna be an unbound solution technically speaking okay for the domain when x is less than more than x naught and x1 this is actually a bound solution okay not a, a bound solution so we are always saying bound solutions the given this solution uh, psi 2 is it bound or unbound it's actually bound because it's you know confined with this region but for psi 1 and psi 3 it's going to be unbound all right it's going to be unbound and we see because the particle can move you know towards minus infinity to infinity so it's a bound solution so really because of this this solution okay for the case where the energy is uh more than the potential is going to be an unbound solution unbound solution now the point of writing all this is because my final question to you is that whether this solution is a bound state or an unbound state right that's the question and you know let's have a think about it Bound states occur that for all energy levels, the particle is confined within a finite region. Now, we know that the energy levels, we need to break them up into less than a potential and more than a potential. But when it's less than a potential, it's actually a bound solution. But when it's more than a potential, it's actually an unbound solution. So, for all energy levels, okay, this wave function representing this state is actually an unbound solution. Okay, unbound solution. Why? Why do I say that again? For all energy levels, yes, for this energy level E1, okay, that's less than uh, the potential over here, it's a bound solution. But you see, the particle can take, you know, another range of energy value. So when it moves to an energy value E2, it becomes unbound. So it's only bound for this region over here, but it's unbound for, for uh, the energy levels above V0. That's why it's an unbound solution. Okay, we talk more about the, the, the bound states later. Okay, now last thing I want to mention, okay, before we uh, wrap up is this thing about the, the coefficients, okay? Uh, time independent Schrodinger equation gives us two linearly independent uh, uh, solutions, right? You're right about that. That's why I wrote A1, B1, A2, B2, A3, uh, B3. This, uh, you know, subscripts correspond with the subscripts of psi, uh, you know, just for labeling purposes. Now, why do I leave them as a blank? Because we're not yet at the stage to really see what are the solutions. Remember, there are two types of solutions, uh, E to the i kx and e to the kx that one is gonna when we're dealing with specific problems but what we can talk about uh, in passing is that there are times where we can eliminate certain coefficients okay i don't want to go into great detail now because it's not that easy to understand but it is gonna be based on the context okay and what i can leave with you right now okay is that it's either gonna be a reflective okay reflection of particles Okay, or diverging solutions. Okay, this does not make so much sense to you right now, okay? But the idea is this. Now, uh, the, the solutions, right? We got all these coefficients right here, okay? And then sometimes we can eliminate the coefficients based on the reflection of particles. Why? Because sometimes the particles move in a certain direction, okay? Let's just say the particles over here, it move in this certain direction, but when it goes to the potential, there will be cases where the particle reflects out like that, right? But on this side, notice that, that there's no reflection involved. The particle will basically just continue over here if we start off with the particle moving from the left to the right. So for this region over here, which corresponds to side 2, we can eliminate one of the coefficients because there are no particles traveling this way. Okay, so yeah, that is just, just have a rough feel towards that. The other one is about the diverging solutions. Now, uh, as you know that sometimes you've got this thing called the EKX, right? EKX. Now, as you can see, as X tends towards infinity, this EKX also tends towards infinity. And that is why this solution is unphysical, okay, because it doesn't make sense. And then uh, we can eliminate the coefficient that is in front of this solution, okay? Now, this again is based on the context of the problem. So, since we have not gotten to the problem, we don't really know what context it is. But be mindful of that. Write the solutions, separate the cases, find out whether they are bound or unbound, and then uh, we can eliminate the coefficients because whether it's a reflection of particles or a diverging solution, right? So, because of YouTube, the 10 minute video, I need to stop here and we're gonna continue on the next video, right? Thanks.